With each release of a new Counter-Strike, the previous version remained untouched. Players who didn't like the changes simply continued to play previous ones. This was especially hard considering how poorly the community received Counter-Strike Source and tournament operators remained on 1.6 until 2013, when Valve forced everyone to play CSGO. Initially, CSGO was just an attempt to adapt CSS for the consoles, but in the future it would become one of the most popular esports games all over the world. However, with the release of Counter-Strike 2, the developers for the first time in history completely disabled the ability to play the previous version. Firstly, they wanted to avoid awful situations from the past and forced everyone to play test CS2. And secondly, in fact, the community was a bit deceived. There is no new game. CSGO was simply ported from the original Source engine to the second one, preserving the code base but adapting and rewriting lots of core systems. At the same time, the old version is no longer available and it is not possible to to play it ever again. Beloved game with a bunch of game modes, community servers and mods was replaced by a cut down beta with a huge number of bugs and even an influx of cheaters. But is that really the case? What if I told you that you can play CSGO again? Max at the microphone again and today I will tell you how you can return to the golden era of Counter Strike. And while you have time, check out Skins Monkey. Use code GABEN and get up to a $5 bonus, select a few of your current skins, pick a new one in the same price range and exchange your old and ugly CSGO items to something new and shiny from Counter Strike 2. Use code GABEN and buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top up bonus. Skins Monkey, links and my code down below. <laughs> In this video we will talk about a completely new project called Supremacy. The goal of which is to revive CSGO and give everyone a chance to experience the golden era from 2014 to 2017. When there were lots of updates with various events, operations, new maps and much more. But at the same time the developer of this project is trying to slightly update the engine and keep all the quality of life improvements that have been released over the years. But most interestingly this project has its own matchmaking with auto connection, its own skin system and drop rewards at the end of game. Games. The key developer of this project is Tito, a 25-year-old self-taught software engineer from Germany. He began his journey with the development of Source mod plugins for Counter-Strike Source and his interest in CSGO began with the earliest alpha and beta versions. But since he didn't have an official invite like many of us, he played on leaked and hacked versions. In 2018 he joined the Discord community that was restoring early builds and making them playable. He always liked the aesthetics of that game's era. And while he was researching the source code leak, his friend Miko found the very first version 1.0.0.40. Since 2014 he has been playing with Steam client emulators, but over time he came to the conclusion that all ready-made solutions are not suitable due to the lack of support and poor compatibility with CSGO. In 2020 he once again digged an open source code, but after that, together with his friend Miko, he began to create the foundation for emulating his own online server unlike previous solutions that worked only offline in the local network and thus the Supremacy project was born. In fact, Tito just tried to play old versions with friends but then he realized that having all the skins at once is not that interesting and he decided to completely rewrite the inventory and matchmaking system of the game. So they created their own game coordinator that works independently of Valve servers. Due to the fact that the Counter-Strike developers hard-coded a huge number of systems, matchmaking had to be created from scratch without using Valve crutches. After skins became more than just cosmetic items, but also a progression element on the servers, the project suddenly attracted a large number of his friends and began to grow rapidly. At the moment they hosted 9 global servers that automatically change their configuration if needed. However, with the addition of new modes their number will increase. Most of them are located in Germany and Romania, but there are also some in North America. Skins, as I already mentioned, are an element of progression, the more you play, the more you unlock. If a player has a bunch of cool skins, it means that he is playing on the project for a long time or he is extremely lucky. At the end of each match in any of the modes, random players will receive a drop of random items. These can be some specific skins, capsules or cases. To avoid situations when players ignore the main essence of the project and simply farm items standing AFK, moderators carefully monitor drops and behavior. Skins are part of the game mechanics and will never be available for trading if someone tries to exchange accounts, both participants will be banned. 
Skins, as in the usual Counter-Strike, can be upgraded through contracts and you can apply any stickers on them. Since the project will be absolutely free without any monetization, cases and capsules can be opened without the need to buy keys. But skins are free, skins will be free and have no value. In addition to skins, the developers have already managed to create the very first operation called Sunset. Along with the drop at the end of the match, you can get missions that will be displayed in your inventory. So far, the goals as in official operations are quite simple. To play some modes, kill with a certain weapon or win matches. As a reward, you will receive experience for upgrading your level and some kind of drop. Something more interesting is planned for the future, but so far or they are not going to reveal all the cards while they are collecting primary feedback from the players. At the moment Tito is not sure what exactly to expect in the future, but it is definitely all of the old modes from CSGO and he likes the idea of adding the beloved Danger Zone Surf and other community concepts. The main gameplay will remain unchanged, but based on the community's feedback he keeps the possibility of adding some new interesting mechanics. Honestly, playing on old liminal maps with old sounds and weapon balance seen only standard factions without agents, without legs, with 32 bullets in the tech is an extremely unusual experience, especially after CS2 where everything is so open, colorful and balanced. There's water here. Why is the... There's another to what? The fuck am I looking at? The map pool consists of all the classic maps, starting with Dust 2 and Mirage, ending with Cobblestone and Ali, plus many maps from all operations. However, the lighting has been slightly changed to make the old maps look better. Due to the fact that Tito is very passionate about old versions of Counter-Strike, he loves unique or cut content. And considering the custom inventory and equipment system, nothing stops him from adding completely new or variations of old weapons such as the SCAR-17 or Galil with a scope. At the moment you can only play Supremacy after receiving an invite. This is necessary to avoid toxic players who harm the community or quickly ban cheaters. Invites are issued to specific Steam accounts linked to your Discord. The goal of the project is not just to revive CSGO, but also to create a full-fledged community where people can just start searching for a game and have a good time. But do not forget that this is just a mod and Tito's pet project, so he reserves the right to kick people who ruin the vibe. To apply, just go to the Discord server using the link in the description and fill the Google form with your Steam and Discord ID and a brief description. After receiving access, you will end up on a closed server where you'll need to download the installer and client updater. At each launch, it will check its version and connect you to the master server. Leave a comment with a ghost emoji if you watched this far and check out my previous video where I talk about the first steps of fighting cheaters in CS2. Until next time.